from the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. The Office of the Prime Minister has defended Cabinet's decision to allow re-engaged retirees to receive a salary and their pension, saying the process will be selective, merit-based, and infrequent. Two retired civil servants have already been re-engaged, the OPM said in a statement. The statement came after the Tribune reported that Cabinet, according to a leaked memo, has changed the official policy of the Minnesota administration that prevented returning retirees from receiving a salary and a pension. After urging the government to implement more restrictive measures to curtail COVID-19, former Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis has come under heavy fire from Health and Wellness Minister Dr. Michael Darville, who said his poor management of the pandemic is public record. Dr. Darville said the Free National Movement should have been actively working to secure additional vaccine supplies before it was voted out of office in September and reminded the public that Dr. Minnis called a snap election in the middle of the strongest COVID-19 surge. On Wednesday, Dr. Dr. Minnis told a local daily that the Free National Movement is concerned about parties and other social events being held recently and the rising COVID-19 death toll. He called on the government to reintroduce more aggressive measures for large gatherings that are currently happening. Since assuming office, the Davis administration has relaxed the nightly curfew, pushing it to 11 p.m. Dr. Darville said yesterday that he did not take too kindly to Dr. Minnis's criticisms. Prime Minister Philip Rave Davis promised his government will bring change to storm-ravaged Abaco and set a plan to rebuild 150 homes on the island is under review. Speaking at the 17th annual Abaco Business Outlook yesterday, Mr. Davis said the previous administration neglected Abaco and Grand Bahama in the two years since Hurricane Dorian ravaged those islands. He said his government is committed to bringing change and thanked Abaco residents for electing both of the Progressive Liberal Party's candidates to represent them. He said the government has extended the Special Economic Recovery Zone order, which will allow those impacted by Hurricane Dorian to import vehicles duty-free no matter where they currently reside. Scores of people flocked to the Kendall G.L. Isaacs Gymnasium yesterday, hoping to get vaccinated against COVID-19 amid dwindling supplies of the vaccine. Some complained about the long lines and wait times to be seen. At one point, a police officer was seen trying to quell the crowd that had gathered outside, asking people to remain calm and to stay physically distant from each other. This comes as the November deadline approaches when the United States will require all adult foreign visitors who are traveling by air to show full COVID-19. COVID-19 vaccination status. Earlier this week, local officials said the first doses of the Pfizer vaccine will no longer be offered as of October 18th due to diminishing supplies. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, the Biden administration said today it will turn next to the Supreme Court in another attempt to halt a Texas law that has banned most abortions since September. The move comes as the Texas clinics are running out of avenues to stop the GOP engineered law that bans abortions once cardiac activity is detected, which is usually at around six weeks. It amounts to the nation's biggest curb to abortion in nearly 50 years. A teenager in Liberia who became a national hero after finding $50,000 and returning it to its rightful owner said he will meet the country's president next week. Emmanuel Tulo said he has been invited to meet President George Wee on Monday. Tulo dropped out of school in the seventh grade to run a taxi service with his motorcycle to make money to help his family, he said. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. Mid to upper level troughing will continue to enhance active weather over the Bahama Islands. Boaters should remain vigilant for possible water spout activity. For all areas, it'll be partly sunny, hot and humid, with isolated showers and thunderstorms becoming fair with a chance of isolated showers tonight. Small crafts should be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers or thunderstorms. Winds northeast to east at 10 knots or less, becoming light and variable at times, seas three feet or less over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 88 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 70. The sun will set this afternoon at 641 and will rise tomorrow morning at 709. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.